Do you have an idea for a product and want to use 3D printing to design that product, prototype it, and eventually even sell it? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down my exact process to how I designed my very own product, exactly how I launched it without having to put upfront capital or resources into equipment and cost, and as well as how to get your first batch of customers and interest so that way you can actually build a product that people want instead of just basing it off of what you think people want. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because as a designer, as someone who's sold physical products before, I can tell you there's nothing worse than building a product and then releasing it out into the world and only to find out that the product that you created isn't what people want. At the very core of any business is building a product or a solution that people would want to spend money on. And the moment someone is willing to exchange their hard-earned money for your product, you have a business. Now, this video is going to break down exactly what you need to do what I did, and the exact steps that I took to not only keep my costs low, but how to get interest in my prototype, even though this design and this product here is not even close to completion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through my computer, kind of break down what I did with real world examples, and exactly how I got my first set of customers paying for this product, let alone even without having a finalized design in hand. So with that said, Let's jump right into it. Okay, so here I am on my computer screen and what I'm gonna do is walk you through the step-by-step -step process to launching your own product, how to ensure there's a demand, want, and need for this design, and how to ensure it's worth your time, energy, and resources to developing this design. So it all boils down to four simple steps and these four steps that I actually took myself to developing this product and then building this business practically overnight. And keep in mind, I actually started this on Sunday, which is uh, like maybe like two or three days ago. It was just an idea and I just started it. So now I'm all in and committed to making this work. So there's four steps. The first step is documenting. The second step is sharing it. The third step is getting feedback. And then the last step is having a sale waitlist or some sort of pre-order page. So I'm going to walk you through each step and show you some of the examples that I've done myself. So the first step is documenting. The reason why you want to document everything is because the reason why is by taking photos and videos, you are essentially creating a story. And when most people are buying a product or when they you know, buy something off of the store shelf, they expect it to work or be perfect. But in most cases, when you're developing a product, it's not there yet. Like it's not store shelf ready, but by providing images and photos and by creating this, this timeline, this, this story of events that it hap that is happening with this product, you can showcase this to your potential customers, people who will see this and they will see the vision. They will see the product you're making. People love to see a story. People love to see how a brand or a business came up with something. People are not expecting that the, the movie that they watch at, at the movie theaters is perfect. They're not going to expect a perfect timeline of events where the hero just comes out on top all the time. No, they expect that the hero, you know, has to go through some trial and error and changes in order for them to overcome those changes and then overcome those challenges to become a different person. And that is the narrative, basically most movies nowadays, right? That's the narrative of any business. Like you develop a product, you overcome the problems when it comes to developing that product and you put it out into the world. And by creating this, people will fall in love with you and in the story. And yes, that means showing the good, the bad and ugly and being true truthful and all raw and authentic. And truthfully, people love this stuff. People don't expect that it's perfect or polished. They just want to see like it's happening and people will be invested, especially if they see it happening. And truthfully, this just builds a story, personality, and you're selling the vision. Think of Shark Tank. Think of any business that has used Kickstarter. Kickstarter is a crowdsource um, website where you can actually fund businesses using your own money. And in exchange, the business will give you a discount or some sort of promo on the product, or maybe bundles or value packs, whatever that looks like. You want to build the vision because when you're building a product, especially when the product's not done yet, you're really just building the vision or selling the vision, right? The next step here is the sharing. So you want to document everything, but the most important step is sharing it. Don't keep everything to yourself. Don't think that just keeping it to yourself and then holding it on and thinking until something gets better or it's perfect or whatever that looks like. Look, the main important thing to developing any product is that you want to collect feedback and see if there's a demand. The worst thing you can do is build a product, spend all this time, money, and resources into developing that thing, and people don't want it, which is why a lot of companies nowadays, they sell the the product before they build it because all you really need to build that product is just a little bit of motivation, a little bit of resources, and if you know people want it, there is urgency to build that product and sell it, which is why this is important. And you want to make sure there is urgency because when you know there's urgency, 
that way you'll know people will spend money on it and that's a business, right? So you wanna avoid waiting till it's perfect. And this is what I did on my Instagram. That same day when I developed the product, all I did was just draft it up with Infusion, which is a CAD software. I created that product, 3D printed it, uh, got the components necessary to making this product, and then I just posted it on Instagram. The first post, probably most engaged post I had in a minute, all the comments people tell me like, dude, this is an amazing design. I love it. Here's what you should change. Here's what you should keep. This is blah, 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 right? This is the feedback portion we'll cover in the next video. But my point with this portion, this slide here is that you want to share it. Progress over perfection is critical to building a great product. No one expects perfection, but they want to see progress and people love that. The next thing here is feedback. From the feedback I got from people, now with all this feedback, this tells me if people want or not. I got people commenting on the design that they love it about the the uh, uh, the heat and the conductivity of it. People telling me to, to make it so they can buy it. I mean, that is critical feedback. If people are telling me to make this product so that they can buy it, I'm on the right track here. And that proves that there is a demand. Now, the critical thing when it comes to getting feedback is you wanna differentiate the difference between noise and signal. Now, when it comes to collecting feedback as a business, there is a huge difference between noise and signal. And this is important, especially if you're building a product. Noise is basically all these other things that don't make the product better. Signal is all the other things that do make the product better. Now, how do you, as a business owner, as a designer, as a creator, who's someone who's making a product, how do you differentiate the difference between the two? Well, let me give you an example. If you owned a bar and you wanted to make or increase your sales or revenue every single night or on the weekends or whenever you're open, how would you go about doing that? Well, you probably collect feedback from people. You would document your bar. You would collect data. And maybe you collected some data and someone said, hey, look, I want a mini golf course or a mini golf course or some sort of putting area to play mini golf with my friends at the bar. But then someone on the feedback form says, I want more variety, more drinks, more things on this list. You know, maybe seasonal drinks, maybe different flavors, maybe different mixtures, maybe blended drinks. Now, as a bar owner, what would make you more money? Would a mini golf or some sort of mini golf inside a bar make more money? Or would more drinks or more options or more variety or maybe more like blended drinks or some specific seasonal limited time promos? Well, the easiest one would be the drinks, the seasonal drinks, because that's what makes the money. People want to go to a bar for the drinks. People don't go to the bar for mini golf. And while, yes, a mini mini golf might be a cool addition, and but keep in mind, this is just a cool addition. It's not what actually makes the bar money. And what makes the bar money is selling more drinks, more stuff, more things that they can charge more, that they can sell more in volume, and then have more people coming through the door because they just want to have a good time. And that's my point with this. You want a difference between noise and signal. And it's very difficult to differentiate this in the beginning, but as you build a better product, and even more so if you know the identity of the product and you know exactly what it's trying to accomplish, it's actually easier to decipher than having to start from scratch or not knowing who your market is. So keep this in mind. The last here is that once you've collected and documented everything, once you've shared it, and once you've collected feedback, once you have your MVP, a prototype, meaning a working product, not a perfect product, a working product, create images and videos, taking all the images and videos of that product, create some sort of landing page, either Shopify, either a waitlist page, either some sort of email sign up, or even some sort of early bird bonus or promo, something to get people through the door. And you want to collect data. You want to collect emails. You want to see if there's interest. So for me, I kept it simple. Shopify plus an email setup. That's all I need to collect data. I don't need any fancy website. I don't need any specific buttons or colors. I don't need a designer or anything like that. I just, it's just me putting my ideas on pen and paper, then converting it into a model, then having a way to distribute it and then sell it. That's all it really is. Because in business, there's really just three things, a product or service, a place to sell it, and a way to take payments. And that's a business. And if you have that, you have a business, none of the fancy stuff. So if you can take orders on that product even better. So for example, this is pretty much a probably almost 80% complete, but it's actually sellable. It would actually work and it would actually get the job done. And by posting a landing page, it actually sells the vision on the product and on the timelines of it. So the most important thing, especially when you're building a product is you want to have very clear timelines, especially if you plan on selling the product even before it's done. So by having clear timelines, you're letting people know like, Hey, look, you can purchase this product, but don't expect to get it right out the gate. Expect that it might take one to two to three months until you get your product. And people who are willing to invest or spend money on the product way before it's done, 
that means they believe in your vision and that means they believe in it so much that they're willing to spend their hard-earned money for your product so you want to collect sales you want to collect data and you also want to have very clear timelines with your customers so that way they know exactly when to expect their product and or if you could also throw in some sort of urgency promos early board birds or some incentive to get people through the front door for example there are people there are companies that offer pre-order bonuses there's people or companies that offer you know the first 50 people that sign up get x y and z you can do that for your product too it can be as simple as a signature it can be as simple as a notebook it can be as simple as like some additional bonus or accessory that will get people to spend money way before the product is released so that's my point with this video you really want to keep it simple short and sweet document everything share it collect that feedback and then have a place where you can sell it with that feedback you've created or gotten to create that product that you can actually sell it to people and that's the whole process of turning that great idea that you have in your head into a finalized design that you can 3d print and even sell so with that said that pretty much wraps up today's video if you guys enjoyed this video and found it valuable or insightful feel free to like and subscribe down below additionally if you want me to personally help you develop and design a product or if you have an idea for a product and just want a clear roadmap from an idea to a finalized design i dropped a link down below where you can work with me one-on-one -on -one to kind of see whether or not our solutions would be a good fit for you from there we'll cover everything you need to do to turning that great idea into a finalized product that you can actually 3d print and sell and even more importantly something that you own the rights to. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.